I make this look good. Are you not entertained? America's first competition talk show. You're in the hub. Good day. Welcome to the Hub Internet Show. Yesterday on the program, we learned that if you are a boring person, there's no way in hell you should have a Twitter account. And uh, welcome back to the program. We're high atop Buckhead in Atlanta, Georgia at the Capitol Grill. This is your last day to vote on Jessica or Barry. They did the face-off debate last Wednesday. You can go on the YouTube channel and vote, place your comment on whether they stay, whether they go. Jessica, J.D., Barry, and Lee, our panelists for today and one more day on the Hub Internet Show. Okay, guys, I I, I want to talk about uh, one of the issues because this there was a recent uh, study that came out. Uh, it was a sex study, believe it or not. And uh, one of the things that they're dealing with, and one of the things they're learning now is that women in the swinging 60s were not as promiscuous, believe it or not, as uh, as they are today. In fact, they realize that, 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 that young women today are nearly three times more sexually active than those of their grandmother's generation. All right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, in the, in the, in the, <laughs> back in the 60s. Wait until so, they're so, able to put it, people it, without it, landlines. Do we throw, <laughs> Wait until that. I was going to say. Everybody knows. Do we throw in the towel now? Do we just throw in the towel? Ta- do we take off the towel? Do we throw in the towel, Jessica, on this culture? It's just gone too far. Well... Were they more sexually active, or is there just more things to get Better into? Better Well, I mean, no, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about positions. It, That's a little. No, is it more sexually active, or are now there just many more things to catch? Ah, oh, okay. No, well, I, I, I think the difference is that you know people We've lie come. now, and they <laughs> lied then, so there are absolutely no credence to these studies whatsoever under the sun. But the other thing that that when you, well, every time you talk about you, you revisit. The 60s, which we constantly do because the baby boomers essentially continue to run the media in this country, yeah. is that you know, if you have a conversation, and, and, and my father would have been someone who was just pre boomer, but if you talk to folks who were born, who were you know in that age range, most of them didn't go to Woodstock. Yeah, many yeah. of them didn't vote for George McGovern or get clean for Gene in New Hampshire or do these things. I mean, mm-hmm. what you had was a very small cohort of the American population that made all the news, and they made all the news because. They were protesting in the streets, they were taking lots of drugs, and they were having lots of sex. And if and those two things are not more interesting than the crew cut guy who got up every morning <laughs> and went to his job at the phone company, then I'm missing something. Well, and I, I would say we've come so far, but I won't. Uh, the, 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 the real point here, though, and you make a really good point, Lee, is that, yes, we the, the media will choose to draw its fascination toward... Whatever is so far out there, what, you know, whatever's at the extreme, because who wants to sit and stare at something that's normal? Well, something that, that quite, it's actually, and it's been that way all along. Well, Jamie. but it's you, you, you know, earlier uh, in a in a segment where we were discussing something off the air is that it, it's a common phenomenon for when you. Um, uh, you purchase a car and then you see that car everywhere you go as soon as you purchase it. Yeah. Well, that phenomenon exists for other things. So when I become an advocate for a particular uh, candidate, I notice the, the the signs maybe or the people who are mentioning it in conversation like-minded to me or programs that I watch on television. We have a tremendous capacity to self-select the information that comes to us um, and reinforces our behavior. So in this circumstance, I think you have, um, generally speaking, people are getting married later. The longer you wait to get married, the more likely it is that you'll have a greater number of sexual partners prior to marriage or well, lifetime. This is the same okay. age. Well, I want to uh, get Jessica's that, comment, and then we're going to the take age. it. We're going to take it all the same time period. Well, yeah. but yeah. some of that is still though. If a, the twenty-four-year-old in the sixties, okay. I'm yeah. sorry, may be married, and the twenty-four-year-old now may still be five. So, so let's do. Let's, let's uh, okay. We're going to go to international affairs in a minute. So hang with us if you're if you're tired of this. It's not the same age. Definitely not the same age. The sixties. But I want to say this: What's wrong with being more sexually active? With women being sexually. Okay, Jessica well, just won the. I have so nothing. <laughs> women yeah. more yeah. go, go back to Monday and vote. Well, I mean, do you really the, want to date somebody who, who doesn't have any experience, would you, or do you want to date somebody who has experience? Well, you it's can't the really ju- for political candidates, and that and that be the point from this study. <laughs> you can't. Vote for the experience. <laughs> 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 but that that be the point of the study. How the hell would you know? I mean, you can't really oh, even oh, no. test you know. that. Oh, you, know. <laughs> you can't. You know. te- there are very few ways to test it's that. All technique. All right. Well, you there are very few ways to test that anymore. Anyway, I want to move on because we need to move on. Um, there, the, a little bit of international affairs right now. Just just last week, uh, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. Uh, 
uh, actually called uh, for a brutal response to terrorism uh, during a trip that he made to Dagestan uh, in Russia's mostly North uh, Muslim North Caucasus region. There were 14 people that died in some bomb blasts in the last two days there. Now, this this guy, I mean, terrorism is just, it's just a way of life now in this region of the world and they've experienced this ever since the the, the, the Chechnyan battles they had after uh, you know after the fall of the Soviet Union they've been fighting this I mean the K, the KGB <laughs> would argue is their own terror group but they uh, but but yet this has been a part of the reality I mean right now <coughs> we are talking about pulling our troops out of Iraq and yet we had, uh, what was it uh, a dozen or so folks killed just in the last few weeks 30 more injured so are we really safer as a nation? Because I know this is a talking point of the Republican Party uh, and, and conservatives as a general rule after George W. Bush were safer as a nation. I don't believe we are, honestly. And and I believe it's time that we acknowledge that and be honest about it. and be not, Because in, until, until we acknowledge that, we can't really move forward with finding a remedy for this problem, finding a real solution. We live under our own facade. Lee? Uh, one, one of the major differences you have in, in the situation of the recent Moscow subway bombings than you had from the, sub, from the bombings that took place in, in Russia before is uh, a good friend of mine happened to be in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago who's an ex-editor of the Moscow Times, and we talked about this at some length even prior to these bombings. The difference was in the first Chechen war, what you had was essentially a war for independence. Um, and it was not a particularly, while the Russians were, uh, as they typically can be, somewhat brutal in that particular iteration of the war. It wasn't until the second Chechen war, when Putin became president, that the Russians really went in um, and, and were a little bit more discriminatory on their bombing and on the activities that took place in Chechnya. The difference he described it is the difference between, as we talked yesterday, is the difference between the first was a war for independence by a lot of Chechens. The second iteration of bombings is really an al-Qaeda more of a Muslim extremist type of activity. So the, the danger that he sees is that what you don't have is an isolated incident where you've got Chechnya wanting to be independent as some of the other uh, southern regions in Russia have wanted to have for years. It more of is a part of the international Al-Qaeda situation. And that's why you've got more death, you've got uh, more suicide bombings. And it just in the, within the last th three days in Dagestan, you had two more attempted suicide bombings. And this is a different group from the indigenous group that was active during the first Chechen war. So it really is more a part of the international but, but the danger is that with it is, Islamic extremists and it's, than it is a localized problem. And it's a splinter cell, so to speak, but a part of a much larger cell exactly. group. Exactly. And, and not, that's the danger. not an indigenous population demonstrating for independence like you had in some of the other Caucasian regions. These it's really a situation where these are, it is likely that they have some connections to al-Qaeda, at least in terms of the tactics they're willing to exploit rather than just wanting it. These folks cannot be isolated because they have resources outside of their immediate group. Jamie, what do you uh, what do you think? Well, I think Lee's uh, comments uh, were certainly more salient than the ones that I might make. I mean, I think that the challenge is, is that any time, well, You've got thirty seconds. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> that is, right. Well, I mean, the reality is, is that any time that you have these types of incidents occurring in any country, it's reasonable to um, have a legitimate discussion and saying, how do we respond to this? Because clearly um, you, you can't allow it to occur. Well, I mean, the thing is, the terror the terror attacks are going up. 38 last year, 47 uh, this year so far in Dagestan region. So uh, you've got you've to, gotta, I mean, take stock of the impact that you're having in diffusing these terror cells. And quite frankly, they are multiplying. Well, one thing I like right now is that we are actually going after al-Qaeda in Pakistan and probably whatever's left in Afghanistan, but we're actually going after the people that attacked us and we're killing them with predators. And so that's what the Russians need to do, we need to do, we need to go after the actual people who are the bad guys and not um, just you know, spread out wherever. And, and I will say that uh, um, Medvedev and Putin are, are doing the right thing and going after them in Chechnya because they are Al Qaeda and they are going to continue until they get there. All right, that about wraps it up. Joel Aaron on the Hub Internet Show. Remember, today is the final day to vote on Jessica or Barry for who won the face off debate last Wednesday. If you didn't get a chance to see it, check it out on the YouTube channel and vote place your comments. Have a great day. Back here, back here, back here. <laughs> Great to see you. We'll see you tomorrow.